about we're just going to say who we are, um, how we got into it, uh, and then going to talk a bit about breaking down some really simple games um, so you can look at them in a different kind of way. Whoa, oh. seems that this one works. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, if we start out with who, um, who we are, the us two here, we're Touch My Pixel, we oh, currently, Pixel. what's our? I'm Touch Your Pixel. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Um, so, yeah, we are, we, we've been making games for about two and a half years. We also subside on, uh, subsist on making uh, websites and stuff. It can be a lot easier sometimes making money off that, but we make uh, flash games, um, online games. We'll show you some of the stuff we do in a second if this computer works. Let's hope it wakes up at some point. And there we go. Um, and uh, yeah, we're currently getting into things like iPhone games and stuff. The main game we, uh, the, the, the major game we've made that got us a lot of press and stuff is called Scary Girl. Has anyone played it? Yeah, yeah there's a few of you. Has anyone finished it? That's what I really want to know. No, none of you. Being an, being an online game, it's really weird. Most people like, you know, play for 20 minutes and then they just kind of give up for some reason. Even if they're enjoying it a lot, it's quite strange. So I'm just going to run this through when it decides to load, um, just so you can have a very quick look. Hopefully it does load. And um, yeah, and th the other guy we uh, conned along to coming because uh, we were kind of worried about speaking is Andre here. He um, does somewhat kind of the same stuff, but I'll let him speak for himself in a second as well. So let me just run this intro. Do we have audio at all? No, we don't. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, uh, this game was created out of uh, Nathan Jurevicius, who's a comic artist from Melbourne. Uh, he, they're looking to turn that brand into a motion picture. So this game was sort of created to bolster the brand and uh, sort of get the name of Scary Girl out there so that uh, people can get a better idea of what it is. So, uh, so our, the things that we worked in in this game were basically creating all of the uh, levels, designing what's in the levels, um, sort of figuring out how the whole game worked and then obviously putting it together and making it. But uh, if we ever get to it, you'll see that it's basically a side-scrolling sort of a platform game. Uh, we, we, we grew up with, uh, you know, back in the old NES days and so these are some of our favourite games playing Mario and that kind of thing. So we kind of just brought that same kind of idea to a, a new market, we hope. Um, we're going to skip all this intro stuff. So slow. I swear when you're playing by yourself and not presenting in front of other people, it takes it it's a lot quicker. Being a web game, it has a few problems of loading like this, so I won't even, uh, I'll just let it load the next level. Um, so, yeah, this is our first uh, major piece that we worked on. Um, before this, we'd done a lot of um, advert games, so it's working for advertising companies, making uh, games that advertise movies and such, um, like for Disney and Bona Vista and other people like that. And uh, yeah, so that's the kind of experience we had that then let us make something like this. Um, yeah, we also, yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, after, after finishing coming out of uni, uh, we both did uh, a design course actually at Monash. Uh, came out and started working in the industry of doing uh, websites. And what we were thinking last night when we were thinking what would be actually something you guys might be, might relate to is like how do you get into games? So how do you get from being somebody who wants to make things and always being uh, interested in making games and that to actually being able to find your way in an industry to be able to have the opportunity to make some you know cool stuff. So so basically what we found or the way that I got into it, Talon got into it was so working in the web industry, there's a fair industry of advertising games, so games for you know scary movie or like cars or those sort of you know 
movies that need to relate to young people, they go, let's make a game on the internet. So they're a good way to get into actually having the opportunity to get paid to make something. And you get to get your skills up at, you know, working in a professional environment of putting things together, designing up what makes a game work, what makes a game fun, and um, basically getting experience in producing something yourself. And, um, and to stress it again, on a small scale, it's basically, it's not a triple A title, it's not something which takes years to produce, although this game took us probably about two years to produce. Um, but basically things that you can actually get into fairly quickly, get experience, get it knocked off, and hopefully make some money in the process. So that's how we found getting into the games industry was one way to do it. Uh, oh, gosh. I'm, on, I'm Andre and I, um, I've been annoyed by this music in the background. This is, this is a game I made. This was my first game that got me into actually producing games and I, I did a prototype contest on the internet and gave it a go and, ma and this was my first game that started me making computer games. It's a really simple one button game. You just um, click it, hold your button and, and release and catch little fishies on the bottom of the ocean, hopefully. <laughs> I, got, I got one, yes. So that's where I started. It's a nice, simple game. And you guys can make these sort of games at home. We work in Flash mostly. So that's the tool we use. And, you know, with just mucking around with assets, putting them in Flash, learning a bit of code and copying stuff off the internet, it's not, it's not impossible for you to make your own games. You just have to go out there, give it a go, and give it a try. OK, that started me off, and then I went into um, my um, next game was called Bunny, Bunny How We First Met. <laughs> have you played it? Well, really? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and, th and that's one of the best things about making games, I think, is that you put a game out there. And when I first re released Bunny How We First Met, I had um, uh, like 100,000 people play it on the first day. And I was like, wow, well, that's more people than go, to the, than go to the grand final football, you know? So it's really rewarding that people are out there playing your game. And I think there's about five, five million different people's islands on Bunny now. So, my island's not very good. <laughs> you, you don't like playing your own games. You get very sick of playing your own games because you play them so many times. If you want a job in game testing, it's not a good idea because you play the same game over and over again. It's not very fun. <laughs> loading, loading. <laughs> What's with the internet at Monash? Okay, so, so this is it. It's sort of like a, a resource management game and it's got RPG -like elements and it's got a, a small dating element as well. Like you talk to this girl and you try to pick her up. Well, you give her stuff. She's a, a bit of a gold digger and you go around <laughs> giving her stuff and you can drag, you can buy bunnies if you've got enough money and you can drag them onto mills and mines and set them to work and explore your island and talk to ghosts and what not. Get achievements. Anyway, that's what I do. It's a lot of fun and now we're, I'm moving on to making social games on Facebook. So we're bringing Bunny to Facebook and your friends are going to be your bunnies and you run around and you jump and you chat and interact with your friends. That's about it. <laughs> Thanks, Andre. Um, yeah, so now we're going to just like talk about a little bit more in depth on how you can actually get into making games yourself. And there's, there's a few different paths. We were talking about Adver gaming before, and I, I think Andre did some of that as well. Yep. Yep, so um, he, he did that as well eight years ago or so, and um, we've been doing it uh, a few years ago. And yeah, so that's pretty much uh, a lot of the time it's teaching yourself how to make them, teaching yourself how to program and design games, um, learning at university how to do this as well, and then going out to the advertising industry. We talk about going out to the advertising industry because Generally, there's people wanting to throw money at you a lot more in that industry. It's a lot, a lot easier to make it. Um, wait, there's something you want to say about that? Okay. And then there's the um, whole indie game scene. Uh, do you guys play indie games or do you just play AAA titles? Who plays indie games here? 
awesome, good. <laughs> um, and so the, the, the indie, there's a massive indie game scene. There's a lot of people making games, whether they're just to play online games like fl uh, Flash games as we've been showing or whether they're downloadable titles. Um, and there is like a lot of indie games starting to come out on uh, Xbox Live and PSN Network as well. Uh, just out of interest, uh, how many people here are actually making a game yourselves at the moment? Or, okay, a couple Sweet. of people. Woo! Good stuff. Um, how many people are more interested in sort of designing games or like visual design as well? Okay, so more people. And uh, what sort of games would you be looking at? Sort of, uh, would it be games for the internet or would it be games sort of consoles or that sort of stuff? So console games? couple of people. Uh, games for the internet. So probably, yeah, probably an equal, I don't know, 5%. <laughs> awesome. We're relating. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, looking at the indie game scene, basically there are a lot of people out there like Andre who just started by themselves and started making something. But uh, it's debatably a, a good way to make money. Um, you can make a bit of... Uh, pocket money in your spare time. Um, Maybe Andre can say more about how he survives making indie games. The pocket money. How, how do I survive? Um, well, the, the first game I made, Fishing Girl, I just did it for, it was a fairly quick turnaround that game. I think it only took two weeks almost to come to completion. Maybe a couple more weeks of idle polish. Not working full time, just, you know, having a little play around and I ended up selling that on, there's a website called Flash Game Licence and you can sell, they put advertising in your game and release it on the internet for you. And I sold that for $6,000 for my first game and I went, yeah, I went, hey, it's not so bad, there is some money to make here. <laughs> so, yeah, and that started me off thinking, you know, maybe I can do this as my full-time job and maybe, you know, if I, if I work hard at it, I can get better at it and learn more and learn from other people. So that's what happened. And how do I survive now? I got, I, I made this, this bunny game pretty much as a prototype of, of what I want to be doing. And I sent that out and ended up getting funding from Film Victoria to produce a social game on Facebook. So now I've got money to um, actually make my games and hopefully it pays off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And I, I guess we, um, we currently haven't made much money from games. It's been like making games for other people and they've been paying us. Um, we're currently working on some of our own games and trying to make money off that. So we don't have much experience in that, uh, truth to tell. Um, with the indie game scene, does everyone know about Tigsource? No? Come on, everyone should be going crazy. Yeah. This is like, thank you. This is like this, Tigsource.com is like one of the massive hubs of indie game creators on the internet. There's really good forums, there's really good, they run like a uh, internet radio show every few weeks or when they can be bothered I think, um, which is really good to listen to. Um, and yeah, as, uh, with these kind of flash games, you, um, one of the things you can do is also make them advertising based rather than selling them onto someone else. You put ads in your game, put them on portals, things like that. Um, and then there's, all, there's like the third stream of getting into games, which is AAA games. And like, yeah, like I personally, I, I don't think I could work making AAA games. You generally, a lot of the time, especially starting off, it's like in any big company, you make one thing, you might um, make the rocks for a uh, racing game or something like that um, for an hour. I think they're about to walk off on me, I'm a little bit unsure. I'm just wondering if anyone's just watching Bunny and actually listen to us. <laughs> it's like yeah. hypnosis yeah. that hypnotizes you. Listen to us, please. We're really boring, so watch us for Okay, so, um, do you want to say yeah, something about AAA? I'll say something. Yeah, I mean, for me, I don't want to work in AAA games because I want to be, I want to have creative control over what I make. I want to be designing the games and, you know, being my own boss and I want my decisions to count, you know? And I just work with one other guy, we get together online, we argue a lot, and at the end of the day you feel that you've had a lot of input into the game, so it gives you something to be proud of, you know? It's, if you work on AAA games, you might be a 3D modeler and you've modeled all the barrels in the game, and that's your contribu contribu contribution. 
contribution to the to the game. So it's nice to um feel to look at pirates. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely making smaller games like the the flash things that we do. You can take it from an idea that you come up with, and basically, if you learn how to program a little bit, you can start to put things together and experiment, and basically have full cr creative control over making something. But uh, basically, what we wanted to look at next was sort of because you have so many options in what you can make, you can basically get out there and see all of the games that other people are making. But when it comes to actually making something for yourself, you have to decide what makes something fun, like what should I be doing and how should I go about it. So that's sort of what we might look at next. Um, so basically we wanted to look at a couple of games um, and see what you think that m makes them fun. So what game should we put up? What? No, no, do, you, do you guys have any um any games on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, one person, tell me what. What game? Just bring up a game. Arcane. Arcane. Can I get that online? Can I play it online? All right, cool. Bring up Arcane. And um, so we crush the castle. That's probably a better idea. Go to crush the castle. Okay. And so, what what makes crush the castle a fun game for you? It's um. A simple game, knock over the tower, try and kill everyone inside it. Just yes, yeah, so you get different, different different items to throw at the tower. Do so that's that's what the game is. But we, we, what makes it fun for you though? Where, where's the fun? Yeah, random destruction. Random destruction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. So we, what we're going to look at, we 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 came up with this. We sat around last night for hours arguing about games, and we realised that some of the experience we have is that, and the reason we can make games is that we analyze them in a certain way of analyzing games. So <clears throat> what we came up with was there's four things you should look at when, look, um, when analyzing games. And they're the core mechanics of the game, and we'll explain what each of these are in a second. The risk rewards in the game, learning patterns, and then the actual content or theme of a game. So in this game here, which is the clock, I'm a little bit confused what's happening, um, the actual core mechanic of the game is kind of how you interact with the game, right? Mm. Can you go and can you explain what a core mechanic is? No, just wait. I haven't <laughs> okay. even played the game. Um, okay. This this guy's from Melbourne, con artists as well. The guy who um, does all the art for this game, so it's and an the, the Australian design. game. If you didn't know that, yeah, is a designer. From um, he he also uh, used to work in Adver Gaming as well. The guy that did these and um, made some games for himself. Uh, they got quite popular and he is now working uh, with uh, Armour Games. So the, the core mechanic in this game is about timing. It's about clicking, and, uh, clicking once, waiting and then clicking again. So that's, that is the core mechanic of the game. Um, which is pretty much the same as, has anyone here played golf games before? Yeah. yeah. Exactly the same core mechanic really when it comes down to it. You wait for a bar that slowly rises or um, rises speedily and you hit it at the right time. So pretty much Angry Birds as well. Yeah, Angry Birds on the iPhone if anyone's played that. Exactly the same mechanic. So that's when we're talking about mechanic. And so th then we can look at the then we can look at the risk reward. So can you, we, we, what's the what's the reward in playing this game? Killing someone's king. Killing someone's king, yep. What else? I'm going to run out. What? You get different weapons, like yep. stones and yep. So upgrades and things like that. What else? Someone, wait, wait, what other rewards are there? Uh, the game has good physics. Okay. So it's like, it looks cool as when it's falling down. Yeah, so it's like fun watching things react how you'd expect them in real life, for sure. All right, thanks. And, um, and, what, is, is there, and there's like risks involved as well. So if you try to make a risky shot, I'm not actually sure about this game, but a lot of games have... Uh, Risks involved if you try to do harder things, for example. Well, yeah, the risk is missing. And so the risk is missing a shot, I guess, if you're going for a, like a the top point up the very top, for example, rather than just trying to hit down the bottom. And having to repeat the level. And having to repeat the level then. So, and if you're learning patterns, so what's what's the patterns in this? Do you want to talk about this? Um, no. Okay, I'll keep going. No. So the patterns. Okay. <laughs> We're going now. So the uh, pattern patterns you learn in this is you learn where the best place to hit something to make it fall down. 
You should generally know this by default, like the rules of this game are pretty much the rules that govern real life, you'd hope, being a physics puzzler. But um, uh, yeah, and then the theme, the theme, the, the content, the theme, what is the theme of this? Castles, medieval, exactly. So we know exactly what it is. We could do exactly the same thing with um, a stack of ponies and throwing fairy floss at it, for example. It would be a completely different theme and it might um, go to a different market. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> could, could, could you bring up a, a robot unicorn? There we go. People love robot unicorn. Awesome. This is good. <laughs> Is, is there another name? Is this how we find it? There we go. Awesome. Okay, so what's the core mechanic of this game? Um, do you want to run out to people? Sure. Do you want to run out to people? No? All right. So what's, what's the core mechanic of this game? Um, it's a whoa, time survival. So stay alive for as long as you can. Stay alive for as long as you can. Uh, jumping and avoiding obstacles while running. Yeah, I think it's getting closer, for sure. Someone else? Making your dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's the theme. That's the theme. Cool. Completely the wrong place. Sorry, so that's the core mechanic of this game. And that, again, is the same core mechanic. Oh, sorry, there we go, further away from the mic. Um, the same core mechanic as you'll get in a lot of other games. What, what's some other games that use the same thing? Uh, like Cannabolt, for example. <laughs> Has anyone played Cannabolt? Yeah, so this is exactly the same core mechanic. Mm. Completely different themes. Am I still on? Yep, cool. Um, all right, so, and then, we, and then we've got risks and rewards of this game. <laughs> Everyone wants sounds. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, we're getting sound. It's coming slowly. The internet's, you know, a bit slow today. Um, the pattern you learn, of course, unless this is a random, randomly creates new levels each time, I can't remember, but you learn the patterns of the levels. And the thing, of course, is unicorns. Awesome, awesome unicorns. Rock unicorns. So this, this here is like a really good example of the kind of game that you could make. It's insanely simple. The, the animations make it really nice, the music makes it really nice, the visuals make it really nice, but the actual core mechanic of the game, insanely simple. So this is the kind of stuff that you should start off making. <laughs> and he's gone. Do you want to talk about another different game? Come on, guys. Let's ask if they have one more game. Uh, do, do we have one more game? I'm going to go over this side. You guys have been yelling at me. What? Wait. What game? I, I have never played it. I'm scared. I, uh, I have to see one I know. Yes. Areas? I have no idea what that is. Do I? I know nothing about games. Huh? <laughs> All right. Um. I, I seem to not know any of these games that people are talking about. Dad game? I have no idea what that is. Um, okay, we'll go to dad game then. Um, Andre seems to know what it is, so hopefully we can talk about it. Ah! <laughs> dad game? Just dad game? Come on guys, help out here. Yeah, the new ground's perfect. Good work. How good was that? So, is there anyone here who's uh, tried submitting a game to Newgrounds before? Yeah? Awesome, good work. <laughs> We've already chosen it, come on, what are you doing? Um, Alright, so this is going to take quite a while. Yep. Does anyone have a game on Newgrounds that we can have a look at? Yeah. And can we look at someone's game on Newgrounds and we can look at these four things about it? No, okay, cool, we'll just keep loading this, if it ever does. That's okay, so, um, we were gonna, like, this, we're just bringing up some games and, uh, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, if we bring up some games, for example, uh, Quake, and you can look at it in those ways, you can look at Plants and Zombies or Tetris in these four, using these four things, and it'll really help you 
uh, designing games and trying to learn out, um, how to make games yourself. Well, let's go to questions, I reckon. Yeah? Yep. Questions? Yep. All right. Um, uh, actually, actually, two, uh, two, two seconds. Uh, all right, cool. So we're also going to, like, some of you seem to have been making games already, but we're just going to run through some of the really simple tools that you can use um, to start making games, making them for free, making them easily, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to pass you on to Tony. Okay. Uh, tools, tools that we use uh, basically started off doing stuff in Flash, but now we do stuff in an open source language called Hacks, which is uh, pretty similar to uh, AS3. But uh, so basically, you're using Flash to lay out levels, that sort of stuff, design your assets, and then bringing them in, like exporting out to obviously Swift format. So. With that, you've got a whole lot of things like Box2D. People would have heard of that. So physics engines, Box2D, Motor2, uh, Nape, a uh, couple more. But yeah, basically using existing libraries is really useful. Um, using the tutorials on all of the sites is useful. Um, that basically is how you'd get into doing Flash development. Uh, as we said before, it's useful to uh, try to get work in just any sort of flash development because that will get your skills up in how to program. Uh, as far as web and iPhone and that sort of stuff goes, you've got Unity 3D. Has anybody used Unity? A couple of people, two or three people. For, for a game engine which is basically pre-built and you can get in, use an editor, drag things around, put models in, texture them, all that sort of stuff, Unity 3D is probably the easiest way to get into doing a 3D game, whether it be for desktop, web, I think it goes out to Wii these days, uh, uh, goes out to iPhone, just released an Android target as well. So something like that is a great tool for getting into. At the moment it's free for like a smaller version, but then you can get professional stuff too. We don't actually use it, um, but would like to use it. Um, iPhone, all the development stuff there is free as well, so you can basically get in and start developing something after leaving here today. Uh, what so, else is there? Uh, something to think about with um, if you're looking at doing something with Unity for example which is a 3D engine um, is that when you're starting out you might not want to um, get stuck into um, doing 3D stuff because it will take 10 times longer than doing just 2D stuff and that's, I, I promise you that. So really start with 2D stuff, um, it will be a lot easier on you. But it's good to fun to look at 3D stuff anyway. And, and there's simpler tools like if you're not into programming and stuff and want to just design design your games. Like there's great indie games made in Game Maker and stuff like that. And there's lots of you scratch. <laughs> RPG games. Scratch. Yeah, and Scratch. Yeah, it's really good. I played with it like a couple of days ago. <laughs> you can't make the most fantastic games with it, but you know it's a great way to get started and understand the logic. So. Yeah. Um, is, it, is there anyone out there who plays adventure games still? Oh, there's heaps of you. Wow, you're real gamers. This is great. I had no idea. Um, there's also something called Adventure Game Studio, which is again a free program, um, open source, made by a bunch of people over the world, and that's really good for making, um, yeah, adventure games. And there's been quite a few like really high quality games released with that recently, including ones like Nanobots and such. I can hear sound, but not quite. It's there. Okay, so we're going to look at this again. Can people, what was the first thing I said you should look at when analyzing games? Yeah, core mechanics, thank you. And the next one? The risk and reward involved. And then learning patterns and the theme. <laughs> Let's get someone up to play it. All right, can, can someone else come up and play it then? Who wants to play it? You. Come up, quick. Run. Play us, show how to play. All right, here we go, Andre. We've got Chris here to play, I think. Is it Chris? Awesome, thank you. All right, so what's, what's, what's the core mechanics of this game, Chris, as you're playing? <laughs> so the, the, the core mechanics of the game, I'm, I'm going to try to work this out without seeing it. So it's pretty much a platform game as far as I can tell, so the core mechanics are being able to move a character around, jump and punch things, it seems. Press C someone's saying. Press 
The, it seems that the risks, I, I don't see any yet, but the rewards just seem to be like awesome, fun destruction, as someone else was pointing out before. Um, learning patterns, there does seem to be like a bunch of, um, I don't know, in, in terms of the actual environment, but at least in terms of control, there's like a, a lot of different things you can do. Um, does it have special moves and stuff, by any chance? It looks, no? <laughs> Yeah, so, it, um, and then the the theme, I have no idea of what the theme of this is, except it maybe it's, yeah, naive artwork, office man. We, we, it's based on a Flash series? Okay. It, it's, yeah, I, I'd say this is quite based on naive art, though, as well. There's, you can almost call that a style in and of itself. Ah oh, man, I thought this guy knew what he was doing. So, so what's the aim of the game? How do we, uh, why do we want to keep playing this? To destroy stuff. Uh, the 48 in the top there, what's the 48 mean? Anybody? Who suggested this game? 48% destroyed, is that what the 48 is? 54, 55? Okay, so we've got, we've got nine players up the top. So why do we have players? How do we die? Lives. I'm on fire! So, all right, so, and like the question is, you have to ask, why do you have lives? Like a lot, a lot of games don't have lives anymore, and why is that? That's because of the risk reward. So, what it's telling you is that you, there's a certain amount of risk you can take. The less lives you end up, the uh, riskier it bec becomes to do crazy things. Right? Um, a lot of games these days, you'll see that they don't even have. Uh, lives because it means you can play a lot more, you can um, like experiment, and you're not as worried about that risk of um, dying. Really, wow! It's Guitar Hero as well. I love this game. Let's take some questions. All right, cool. We're gonna take some questions. Does that sound good? We can stop talking and ask you guys stuff. Awesome. Okay, cool. So, questions? Uh, have we got a second mic somewhere? No. All right, we'll run. It's all right. Um, what was your inspiration to do indie games? Like, what made you create your games? <laughs> um, I'll get Andre to answer that one. Um, inspiration. I, I guess playing other games inspires you. You know, every time you play a game that you enjoy and get pleasure out of it, that inspires you. And I guess feedback, player feedback, when you, when you actually get to the point of releasing a game and you get people playing it, that inspires you to to make more, make more entertainment, I suppose. What else have we got? Got me over here. Let's go for this guy at the front. How did you come up with the name Touch My Pixel? <laughs> uh, well, it was actually uh, my third year university, uh, there was the name of my third year university exhibition, and I just happened to be the one that bought the domain name and kept it for years, and when we started a business, we were like, haha, we could call it Touch My Pixel, how funny is that, aha. And we tried to think of other names, and none of them really stuck, so <laughs> just ended up like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the, your favorite game you've ever worked on? Uh, let's see, favorite game. Mm, worked on? <laughs> Maybe actually, for Scary Movie 4, I made a shooting game years ago where basically I had to get all of the characters and sort of um, cut them out so they were all just puppeteered. And you'd basically come into a scene and you'd move around the mouse, it'd all parallax a bit, and basically shoot limbs and heads off people and you'd shoot their head off. And I spent a whole day working on like having blood coming spurting out of a person's <laughs> head and stuff like that. And so when you first start out getting work and you get paid for a whole day to like, animate blood coming out of someone's head, you're like, sweet, I got paid for a whole day to make arms fly off. And so that's actually really fun. So, and like, the funny thing is, you do actually get paid to do that stuff. So, you know. And, and, and that was in advert gaming, so you can have fun doing that as well. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah I, I enjoy the short, make the, making the short games and prototyping is probably the most fun I enjoy because you do something, you've got a really quick result, and people can play it and see it's fun. So I like that quick turnaround. The longer the game project, the more of a grind it becomes, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the most I've I've got back is actually from like game-related stuff, doing like interactive art, because you're there 
watching people use it and you get that direct feedback from people. So yeah, sorry, there's a yeah, question. What would you say is the best way to release a game, like through Newgrounds or your own website or what? That's you. Well, I, well, I mean, if you get if you can get a someone to sponsor your game, that's the best way because they'll handle all the distribution for you. You know, they'll they'll put it out on the sites, and you know, help you in that regard. But um, if if you've just made a game and you don't want to go through Flash Game License and sell it or find a sponsor, then you can just upload it where you want. You know, where you can find find to upload it and get some feedback. Newgrounds, I reckon, has got better feedback than Congregate. You know, the people who actually play your game will reply to you and give you some decent feedback rather than just saying this game sucks. Um, and one thing with portals is that there's places you can upload a game, uh, especially if you make it very self-contained, make sure you include ads in there if you're wanting to make money off it at all, links to yourself, and then they'll just spread it around to like 10,000 different portals for you. And that, that's a good thing. Yeah, another, another important thing probably would be looking to start a brand. So basically, if you start building up like a character or a brand, people will start to relate to that. You'll get a following of people following that. So a game will basically advertise itself. Like if you get everybody knowing, oh, that's the next bunny game, for instance, then there's already a whole group of people you can advertise in your own games, that sort of stuff, to bring people into the next thing that you do. And so... Yeah, and Ninja, Ninja Kiwi are the experts of, on brand, you know, with their balloons and all those sorts of games, you know, they're really good at bringing a strong brand presence. And blog about your stuff and, you know, get yourself out there and get heard. And uh, with, with balloons, you can see that you don't always have to have the best uh, art, so, yeah, and they've just made a brand out of something that's very specific to them. Are there any free tools out there for making real-time strategy games? Is there any free tools out there for making real-time strategy games? Sorry, I couldn't quite hear them through the thing. Um, I know there is a, a bunch of... Uh, I know there is like a really big one on SourceForge, which is an um, open source repository. Um, I don't think it's very easy. They've pretty much made a, a quite complex one. Um, if you're going to look at real, making real-time strategy, I'd really suggest um, getting into modding. First, I know there's like a big mod community. I know there's people in, Mel um, in Melbourne making mods for Command and Conquer 3, for example, um, and spending like years on doing that. So I think that's a really good way into it because they're really complex to make. Yeah. But you, you can also simplify that genre, like play Breaking the Tower. It's a really good Java game online, and it's like a simplification of that. Cool. Um, for someone that's never actually like, Used this sort of software before, but it wants to make indie games. Like, what do you? What would you suggest? What software could they use? Uh, are you talking Flash games, or well, basically using Flash is the easiest way. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be funny at all, but um, you can start out doing really basic things in Flash. You don't need to know too much. And what we were talking about before was the things that make a game fun. Like it could just be, we were discussing this last night, it could just be a line moving or a circle moving bigger and smaller and you have to click when the circle's at its biggest. And so then you have to, you know, timing, it's got uh, sort of the risk of like, maybe you get more points if it's sort of close to it or, you know, like you have to just basically come up with a concept or a mechanic. And it, the game could be really simple. It could just be that there's a timeline playing in Flash and you hit it and it stops it and then it can jump to somewhere else and go, you got this. So basically, you start out as small as you want, but Flash is 2D, it's easy, it's got a whole interface so you can just build stuff in, but it'll probably take a bit of programming. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, as you're saying, there's a really simple game, always start, especially if, if you're learning to program, always start with that simplest, simplest idea. Um, then you can keep adding to it. You could add score to that. You could then add sound to it. You could then add interesting graphics, etc. So yeah, question? Yeah. Um, yeah, wondering what you think of things like uh, you know non non flash things if we want to do something else. So things like X and A and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, X and A is really good. You can. It's it's sort of a similar difficulty to making flash games. Really, like C sharps are really good solid language and. It's all free to download, so get download and just start making it. Yeah, yeah. XNA, I used it for a week or so. I looked at it, and it's actually quite nice to work in. It's not too bad, but uh, a lot of the time you also have to look at like what you're producing the game for. Like XNA, you'll be locked into doing it just for Xbox or probably Xbox LA, and, and yeah, and for PC. But um, 
the actual market for Xbox LA is quite small and nobody seems to really be making much money out of it. So as far as other things go, like you've got the internet, that's a lot broader market. You've got things like iPhone, which was uh, currently, you know, it was a booming market, but there's also a lot of competition in that. So, you know, you have to look at what you're doing. Like it could be good to get it out there, but whether you're going to get a big audience with a game like that or not, you have to sort of weigh up the pros and cons. And XNA, it's going to probably be a larger game because it's going to be 3D and all this kind of stuff. So it'll take a lot more time too. And I, I think people expect a lot more out of your game if you're um, making it um, for Xbox Live or on the PC. Um, it can be harder and also it's, it's not as graphical generally as you're making it. So starting out with something simple like Flash can be easier. Um, let's say you made a game in Game Maker, right? Is there a way to transport that, like convert it to Flash? Because I can make games in Game Maker, just not Flash. I'm not that good with the whole. N not that I know of, but I mean, people do downloadable titles and self promote them. And, you know, there's a lot of Game Maker games that are popular out there. So you don't have to be on Flash to, to get customers in. It's just. Um, it's up to you, really. I guess one thing, if you're making a game in Game Maker, and what, what you can do is team up with someone else, like find someone else on the internet. It's a big place out there um, who is learning programming and can help you out. You've done the game design, you've done the graphics in Game Maker, and then you can work with them on making, actually making it an online game or a downloadable game or anything like that. Can I come up and play the game? <laughs> Which game? This one. Oh, this one. No. <laughs> I was like, worth trying. <laughs> I want to play it too. I've always been interested in starting making games. However, whenever I look at all the options available, none of them, all of them, seem to be proprietary, and I don't want to learn to use a system which which will restrict my, how I distribute it I, or could eventually just lock me out of being able to edit or yep. All play right. my so, game. Um, that's, it's a good point and sometimes I worry about that too. The system that we use, um, which is very much like using Flash, called Hax. It's free online, H-A-X-E or Hex. I always get that wrong. Um, that lets you make, um, make things for Flash. It's got um, targets that work somewhat for the Canvas JavaScript, so in the future, maybe this HTML5, which everyone hears about, um, might work for that. It does C++ targets, all from the same um, code base. You can use the same assets, that kind of thing. So that's, in terms of like being able to do it for anything, anywhere, not being locked into a vendor, that can be a good, a good thing to look at. Yeah. So, so basically, Hacks is a programming language. That's not going to help you out too much with getting straight in and building stuff. That's the problem. That's the problem. So that's where before we're saying one of the best options is most likely Unity because it has a lot of different targets as well, where you can publish it out to the PC or the Mac or Android, iPhone, Wii. Um, but also, you know, it's free for just the, the basic sort of one, which means you don't get all the shaders and renderers and all these sort of stuff of the advanced features, but if you're just making some basic things, it's probably the best option to get into. And, and, and your skills always apply to any, like if you learn one program, you can yeah. apply those skills yeah. to any and, of them. And one thing, never, like when you, especially when you're starting out, like even now, most things you make after six months, you'll just be wanting to make something new and better anyway and, and m make it in a better way. Um, I've, I've been using the, the, the program Scratch. Uh, my school got me into Scratch. I've been using the Scratch program for a while now. Uh, but I'd like to move on from that because obviously that it, Scratch is pretty restrictive in terms of how you distribute it. You can only put it up on their website. What would you suggest, what language should I move on from, from Scratch? Like what else should I do next from there? Well, it's, it's kind of up to you and I think it's the same question over and over and it's very hard to answer what's going to suit you and your development needs. Just go out there and try something, pick it up and try out programming. And Scratch is a great background for, for teaching you the basics of programming, so. Um, there is something else that I know, um, especially from, I know a lot of game designers um, like getting into this. Even if you just want to be a game designer, even if you just want to do art for games, it's always good learning a little bit of programming. Um, just because it lets you make things move, I guess, and make things interact, so it's good to test out your ideas and things. I know there's something called uh, Lua Love. Um, it's uh, yeah, a Lua program. It's a simple programming language, and yeah, love 
it's quite good. Lua is L U A. Uh, Lua L U A. Yeah, thank you. Someone got a sign? Um, how strong of a computer do you need to start programming? <laughs> uh, one that's about five years old, ten years old will be fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, people have been programming on crap computers forever. You know, you, all it is is text files, so you don't really need a powerful computer, you know. It's actually, it's actually a benefit having quite a bad computer because then you won't make something which doesn't perform well on other people's computers. Like if you have the best computer out there, and you make a game which just runs on yours because you're most likely a bad programmer and you haven't optimized it, then it's gonna run even worse on somebody who has a worse computer than you. So I actually kind of liked having a fairly average computer I used to develop just on my laptop. Um, so then I could guarantee whatever computer I put it on, it would run perfectly because, yeah. Uh, how do you get someone to sponsor your game? Uh, um, there's, a, there's a site called Flash Game License. I'm giving them a plug. But um, <laughs> if you go there, it's actually really good because there's forums there and chat there and people will help you out and people who you can collaborate with and also it joins people who buy your games and sell your games. So Flash Game Licence, look it up. Become a member, you'll see me there. Luna Drift I am and um, have a chat. And I know there's other communities for things like uh, Unity and stuff that are the same kind of thing. Um, that's still in its infancy though. Um, what's a good community or forum for starting Flash games for like code or support or anything? Um, yeah, ag again, Flash Game License, come, come and say hello to me there. We need more Australians, you know. <laughs> Any more questions? Any more questions? I'll wrap it up. <laughs> Hand up high so I can actually see it. Nope. Wait, why? Good question, Dan. What is that background music? It's like can you just elevator. break the 12 things so we can see what's going to happen next? Well, we're, we're finishing up. Let's get the kids. All right, I think it's ended. You can play it. You want to play? You can play. Okay, it this guy, he can, he can break him. He can break it. Oh, I think Tony's playing now. Do you really want to <laughs> Come on, run. You can do this. Do this. For for your peers, any, man. Any other questions oh, while the guy's doing this? Like... <laughs> Got a question down here as well. Uh, me and my friend tried to make a game in Unity and like, it's really hard to learn the programming, so how would you go about learning JavaScript for Unity? Um, yeah, basically going through tutorials always is kind of the best way, or just starting smaller. Like, if you want to learn programming, uh, we, keep, we keep saying Flash because I'd see that as a very easy sort of thing. If you have a 2D plane, you're basically saying, I want to move this box left and right. I want to change its size. I want to click and I want to do something. like Take everything back to its basics and then start from there. So Unity is good, but <laughs> it might also be hard to get into um, because it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. And, and as you're saying with Flash again, we're Flash kids as you can tell. Um, you can do a lot of the stuff in the timeline, you can just kind of animate and then you can just do little bits of programming and you can build up from there. So hopefully that answers. That's it. Laser cool. Okay, well, um, yeah, basically that's it. Um, thanks for coming and listening to us. Hopefully... <laughs> ho hopefully we've stressed enough, basically, Try and start as small as you can and get some skills and build it up from there and basically you can make games, get out there now and do it. Alright, give the guys a round of applause, the guys from Touch My Pixel!